Right, we are live. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Kiwi Lads channel. We are here for yet another match of the URC. The Lions taking on the Sharks. It's at Cape Town Stadium. We just witnessed a very close game between two South African sides and the Stormers and the Bulls. And now we get to do it all over again with another matchup taking place. But if you are new to the channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It is hugely appreciated. You guys all being here and rearing to go for a little bit of late night rugby. Currently in New Zealand, we are sitting 2 a.m., this is round 13's rescheduled fixture that has taken place, and hopefully it is going to be just as entertaining and just as close as the other game that we did, or that we did just get to see, I should say, there. But yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well. We will quickly look through the lineups of this game, see exactly who both sides are going to have out on the field. But I know that there's some very good players in both of these lineups, and both sides really trying to work their way towards, I guess, cementing themselves as one of the sides that can actually go through to the next round. There's actually another game taking place at the same time here for this competition, and that is going to be the matchup that has taken place between Cardiff and also the Scarlets. So we'll have to wait and see how that one transpires compared to this matchup. But the big win for the Stormers up against the Bulls does now mean that they promote themselves into first out of the South African Conference Alliance. They are in last, so they could really cause some problems for the Sharks if they do end up getting themselves a win. And also, I hope this game has more action at the start. And also, the Sharks 35, the Lions 12. And there says Bradley Stander there, or Stunder. It might be Stunder, is it? I hope you are doing well, mate. And I hope you are excited for this matchup. For anyone who doesn't know, there is a Champions Cup going on currently in the world of, I guess, professional rugby. And we will be covering the game that is taking place. Or we will be keeping you updated on the game, I should say, that is coming up very soon. And that match will be the matchup between, I believe it is Ulster and Toulouse, which should be an interesting enough match to see how it does end up going. But we will have that in the bottom corner of the screen so that we can keep you guys informed of that game as well. But looking through at the starting lineup here for the Sharks, Oxnashad, Bongi Umbanambi, and Thomas Detoy as the front row. He is also the captain. Then it is Grobola and Rene Alhihu there as the locks. Colisi, Fenta, and Butelezi as a loose forward trio. Hendrickson, Bosch as the 19. Mabimpi, Low, Tupai. Then also Cock and Volmink. That is the starting lineup. For the Sharks, they don't really give the commentators too much time to be able to talk about the lineups. I've realized they just pretty much fly through them. This game is going to be kicking off at 2.05. Looking through now at the away side in this game, the Lions, Sitoli, Porter, and then it will be Duplessis in the front row, then Schoolman and Nathaniel. There as the locks, Frankie Horn, the Tuchuka brothers, also in the loose forward trio, and then Vandenberg, Henriksa, Vandermeuver, Russ, Similani, Max Wane, and Horn. That's actually how quick they make the commentator read it out. But then they do give them a little bit more time to see the lineup afterwards and show them the replacements for well, that one. But I'm looking forward to seeing Max Wane out on the way. I feel like he could have quite an impact. But for him to have an impact, he's got to go head-to-head -head with Makazoli Mapimpi, which does get me very excited indeed for this matchup. And yeah, once the game between Ulster and Toulouse does kick off, I will keep you guys informed of the score throughout that game. But anyone who doesn't know the Blitzbox 7 side, they are going to have their matchup coming up very soon. And that will be up against the Fijians. And it will be. And also, Petty is such a legend for staying through the night. But these guys are good on you, mate. And there is our C. Sebastian. And yeah, it's certainly going to be a late night one. I assume by the end of this one, we might get a sleeping Patty, maybe. But we have to wait and see. Of oh, course, and also, you do a better job. Or you did a better job than them. As on there says, Betty Wagon for the lineups. Oh, that's because I think it's like they expect that they get more time to talk about the lineup. Like they kind of start off right to the front row, who we've got here, it is going to be such and such. And then it moves to locks and he's like, hang on, what's going on here? Oh, that's actually a very useful thing. In one moment, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to quickly take a screenshot on my phone of the Champions Cup table of who plays who at what stage. Here we go, that'll be useful. And also... That's all I needed. I just needed a little one of me being able to see exactly who plays who at the kind of latest stages of the comp. Now, Yanni Duplessis and some of my cromies are at the game. And there's his Kutenda. Yeah, hopefully they do enjoy it. It is going to be an awesome atmosphere. Did they go to the first game between the Stormers and the Sharks? Or sorry, Stormers and the Bulls also. And thanks, though, mate. And there it says a paddy wagon. That one, but currently they are showing that man Bongi Umbanambi. To be ready for the front row and see a Khaleesi, of course, the Springboks captain from their most recent rugby championship campaign, which is coming up in only a couple more months, which is pretty awesome to see. Bangladesh currently two down in the cricket. For anyone wondering in that game, 
between Bangladesh and South Africa. But this game about to be underway, and it will be Jordan Hendricks who does get this game underway for their Lions kicking off to the Sharks. Now, this is going to be so important. The first 10 minutes of this game, we did see a slow start to the last game. But the big thing for me here is going to be if they do end up getting it right in the early stages, the Sharks can be dominant in this game. But the Lions are a side that even though they are lower down on the table, they have impact off that bench and also just a huge amount of physicality. Speaking of that, physicality almost wrestling their way into position there, but still going to be available for the Sharks on the 22. And it will be Jaden Hendricks who does roll that one back and he has been told to use it. So he will be putting up the box kick now. Only 20 meters or sorry 20 minutes into this game and also i can't miss any of these streams it's so nice having someone to chat to while watching the game hence last night's uh live commentary with katie and there as i'll see sebastian for that one that was on the which one was that on that was on wait did katie did katie actually do the the connard versus leinster game oh no we were talking about that on the discord weren't we never mind sorry i got i got all excited for a second i was like hang on is she actually she got the channel up and running Perhaps. But we'll just have to hire her as one of the Kiwi lads. She can do the late night live streams. Oh, I feel like you guys would just love it as well. You know, get Sebastian on the hockey slash football. Sebastian's a football man. It's going to be nicely taken there by the Lions. They've actually got the position for the early stages. Vandenberg does fall over. He sells the dummy now. He's really isolated himself. He's knocked that ball on. And Sirkalisi was able to just get in a nice little hit there. Apparently now, she's going to be the scrum feed for the Sharks. So a quick start to this game as well. Just like the last one, seems like it could be a little bit of a battle and a chess match for the early stages. You have to say, Jaden Henderson, was he offside? When that boy had a year the Discord, ah, oh, wow, man, I got me all excited in this, <laughs> Sebastian. Or that one. Mm. Yeah. See, I was actually, I was up at about six. No, not six. You know, it was six. I was up at six. And I saw one of the first messages come through and I was like, do I do it? Do I get out of bed and do I do it? And then I decided in the end, probably I should sleep. Because if I don't, I'm probably not going to get to And yeah, unless they are annoying. And they're with her starting the live streaming games. And there, that's going to be the penalty. The Sharks, the front row going down. Jaden Hendricks considers taking the quick tap. But Yanni Duplessy on this near side, just having his face put in the ground. He won't mind it too much, of course. Normally, that's how the veterans get into the game when they get a little bit roughed up. I heard that fly again. It's just teasing me at this point in time. It's as if it's just sitting there waiting till I almost get comfortable. Who's that man? He's just a random head in the way. He was good advertising for the South Sea, Shells, South sea, South sea Sharks cap, I should say there. And now currently... Kerwin Bosch with a good kick downfield. The Sharks, they have been doing decently in the Curry Cup overall. And also URC-wise, they are in that top eight currently. But they will want to keep on building towards that top four. Because if you get top four, you get a home final. And imagine the advantage that the South African sides would have if they did have a home advantage up against the likes of a Leinster or a Munster or even Edinburgh somewhere around there. And I'll say I can definitely help with the FIFA World Cup games uh, if that's fine. See, Sebastian, I'm keen because I feel like I've forgotten a lot of what I know about football. <laughs> like, And that's the thing. You know, when you have like moments, how you follow a sport heavily and all you can think of is that one and then you go back to one that you watched like literally last year and your brain's just blank, like almost like starting in. I had that with the NRL. Like I was watching it consistently throughout lockdown. Every single game, I'd watch like two a day, like throughout the week. I was watching the old matches as well. And then I got to doing rugby union and my brain then just went, right, union's the main one, leaves wiped off the face of the earth. And then I got to the NRL and I was like, I can't remember any of these guys that like I had talked about to my parents like six months prior. I'm throwing that one over the top. It's nicely taken in the end by the Lions. It was a tricky one to try and line up. I think that could almost be the penalty. No, they don't end up giving it away. I'm currently passing it back across. Hey, howdy, hey, y'all. Hope you're all well. And there is us, he's getting Dixon, and also, I'm not sure, ice hockey. I will either have a segment on the channel. Uh, we have no hockey audience, and it will take forever to build a fan base. And there, says Sebastian as well. Because even football is probably questionable at this stage uh, for the... Because I think that's the thing. I'm probably Kiwi Lads sporting it 
because I hate the thought of getting a copyright strike and not being able to get it taken off like during a busy season. Like I got that last year for the World Cup and it sucked because we just had to do everything like differently. Like we still did it. Like it was just, it wasn't quite as smooth and we didn't have the emojis. I feel like the emojis were the big thing missing. And oh, yeah, I hope you're well, Seth Betty. I'm Katie Dixon. And also, how's it going? Katie says, a bastion there as well. We're currently sitting five meters out. Oh, sorry, five minutes into this game. I keep on confusing my meters and my minutes at this point in time. A little bit of a loose ball. Jaden Henderson, they've got the advantage here for the Sharks as well. He's running straight sideways. Now finds the link up. Oh, it's gone through the hands of Marius Lowe. Oh, it's very slippery. Wait, where did that rain come from? Where did that moisture come from? That wasn't there before. I think it's absolutely bucketing down now at Cape Town. Because that was not wet before. And the way he slid, like, that's it. this is at the same ground, isn't it? And it's all of a sudden a lot more wet. So I think it's just absolutely pissing down, getting moist. And now because they've already had a game on the turf, it's really starting to rough up a little bit. And just woke up and now it's time for more rugby with the lads. 10 out 10. Can't get the URC, but I got to lose versus Ulster. Yep, that is coming up very soon. Although a couple late changes for, oh no, sorry, that's the next game, isn't it? That's for Munster. Who are you picking for Munster versus Exeter Chiefs, Katie, out of curiosity? There is no wrong answer other than one of them. I feel like that was so much pressure, wasn't it? No, nah, there's no wrong answers there. And any, are they playing in Durban? They are. I thought that was the same stadium. Have I been lied to? Their first stadium was Cape, or not, no, that first stadium wasn't Cape Town Stadium, was it? Have I been pranked? I thought that last game was actually being played in Cape Town as well. And both games were being played in the same location. Grobola goes over and he scores the try. And that'll do. Oh, the Sharks. I think I got myself royally confused. I was like, where are the cheerleaders? <laughs> they were here before. Thought maybe they went home in the rain. Also, I'm going Munster. That is the right answer, Katie. Good job. They're $3.60 underdogs. I feel like I need to stop looking at the odds because it just makes me sad because I'm like, I don't have any money to put on them. So we just look at the odds and go, geez, that'll be a good bet. It's like Ireland to beat Fiji. I was talking about it all throughout the day beforehand. I was like, Ireland are beating Fiji in that first game. Fiji will be rusty. And Ireland were paying like $5.20. And I was like, damn, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but this is what it is. And recognize the stadium by the cheerleaders and men of culture. <laughs> and there's this Sebastian. Yeah, it did sound bad, didn't it? <laughs> but yeah, they like, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was some sort of like fun little super round how everyone plays from the same location. They check in this grounding for Grobola. I think he ended up trying to slide over and didn't quite get it as smooth as he would have loved to. All right, we will all go like this. And we will go like this. There we go. Right. By the sounds of it, Yanni Duplessis, he's going to the bin. He's going bye-bye. I can talk really high when my voice is almost gone. You know, he's just, oh, yeah, no, that's a cynical ribcage tickler there. That's kind of, is that you, Mr. Bismarck Duplessis? Instead, it's going to be Yanni, who is going off the field now. Hey, Yanni Duplessis, he's sin bin for 10. Wait a minute. Is he brothers with Bismarck Duplessis? Because they kind of look similar. Just, wait, did they say just came back from a three-week suspension, then threw a punch and got cited? <laughs> what is he doing? Right, I'm going to look up to see if Bismarck has a brother named Yanni. Yanni Duplessis. If he does, it wouldn't even surprise me. Children, spouse, siblings, Bismarck Duplessis. No surprises there. <laughs> that is literally the most, like unsurprising thing ever that I think I've seen in the last little while. <laughs> but they are related. Yes, brother, says Laurie. Both of them, their discipline's not flash, is it? And what was the card for? He pretty much cheap shot of someone who wasn't even getting the ball and just took them out on the rib cage. And you know, you know, oh, mama mia. It's on there. And also we've got their typical duplicy, always giving away the penalties. Says that Charmaine there. And only two brothers play, I guess. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, 
It's like Bismarck's only just come back from a suspension, and now Yanni's decided to get himself suspended here. It's a penalty there to the Sharks. Taking the quick tap. Nope, it wasn't from the mark. So they do have to go back to that one. Currently now nine minutes into this game. The Sharks, they've got themselves a nice 7-0 lead up against the Lions. And if they can continue to build that lead while they are down to the men, or the 14 men on the field, I should say there, could be very useful. But Ulster versus Toulouse has just kicked off. So, so we'll keep you guys informed of what is happening in that game. Ulster is in the white and Toulouse are in the red. They love to not play into the Duplessy brothers have a tough childhood. Why are they so aggressive in the ASC Sebastian? That's a good question because they just go after you, everyone, don't they? Like, I guess it, it's a tricky one because you're either going to get smashed in the rib cage or you're not going to get smashed in the side, I guess you could say. Was that a sentence? Not really, but we'll go with it just for now. Currently now the penalties conceded sitting there. Three for the Lions, one for the Sharks. I'll quickly go like this. There we go. Let's just make sure we were all running smoothly. We have been using a lot of Wi-Fi today as this is about our... It's literally about our 12th hour of live streaming. For just today, they must have a lot of stress in their day jobs. Yes, Charmaine, you'd have to think so. Like, because I guess they probably need a day job because of all the suspension weeks that they have without pay. So they got to find some type of weekly job, maybe a counsellor, one of them could be. Working with people, customers, customer support, that always gets people down a little bit sometimes. Depending on the job, Jaden Andrews say he sees the run forward, beautifully taken there by the Sharks, pulls the pass up. It's another try for the Sharks, and now they're leading this game 12 now. That's Pepsi Butelesi, who has been able to go over. And in 10 minutes, the Sharks have been able to score too. They're enjoying their home field. One is doctor, the other is a lawyer. Are they actually? Dr. Duplessis and what do you call a judge or not a judge, a lawyer, just a lawyer normally, I guess. A lawyer, Duplessis, a mob hitman more like, or a hitman more likely. Very nicely taken. And then it was Marius Lowe found the pop pass up to, it was Pepsi Butelazi gets a big hug from Werner Koch and I'll say, yeah, Pepsi in there. See Charmaine. Currently, it's still pouring down at Kings Park. An attorney. Oh, sorry, an attorney. So, attorney duplicy. Tell you what, I feel like if you got that wrong, he'd give you a right hook as well. Currently, 11 minutes into this game now. And it is going to be Q and Bosch lining up this kick. Should be a relatively easy one. He has got it over. And now the score will be 14 0 to the Sharks after only the 11 minutes. And how can they have this job? I mean, they are like this. I guess just the experience. They've been around for so long. They're veterans of the game. They never, well, no, they did used to be dirty players, but they used to get away with it a little bit more back in the day before there were 50 cameras. You know, in the old days, you could punch someone in the front row, and as long as no one saw it, you were all good. Like, enough, you're like, you've got he say, she say type thing. So you'd be like, oh, he punched me. And they'll be like, why? And they'll be like, oh, I'd try and get him in. And they'll be like, no, nah, just play the game. Don't worry about him. Just play the game. That was Pepsi Butelesi with a very nice try score there. And I was hoping the doctor doesn't have any anesthetic. And Sharks Forever says, Stoney, this one, what's your score prediction for this game? Uh, Stoney, do let me know. In fact, everyone give your score prediction for this game. I'm going to say from the start that we've seen, Sharks will win this game 42 points to 12. So, and they win by 30 points. It's pretty bold, but currently from what I've seen, yes, they've had a majority of this ball, so it's easy to say that they will have quite a few tries, but if the discipline side of the Lions does let them down, there's a chance that the Sharks could win this game by 30. And that's my prediction's probably going to be a mile off. Now I'm about to throw this ball into the back, and it's all a little bit loose. Vincent Tuchuka unable to claim it. Now Thomas Tatoi goes back across Sia Khaleesi. Now off to Kerwin and Bosch, Marius Lowe, and it's looking extremely wet here. And 46 to 17 there from Paddy Wagon, and also 30 16. Very similar. I'm actually going to star them all, and we'll see who ends up getting the closest out of everyone, but that is going to be 13 minutes and taking the mark for Edwell van der Merwe. And also we have been there 43, 17 for the Sharks. I feel the rest didn't care about punches 10 years ago. And I'll just tell the guys to calm down. Yeah. So it's changed a lot. Like I talked to Norm Maxwell, who's an ex all black. And he said, when he first came into rugby, his job as a lock was to punch the opposition front rower so that he got annoyed and would stand up. And then because their front row, uh, his front row, 
knew that they were going to get angry, they wouldn't bind up for the scrum. So they'd be ready to throw the punches if the guy stood up. And that's kind of how rugby's changed over the years. I guess you can't really get away with doing that in our days. No one was at the game as a Chiefs supporter. Just imagine that, says Sebastian there. And I was a bit shocked from the Chiefs game. Yeah, certainly not what we were expecting for that game. Like, I thought it was going to be close. Everyone thought it was going to be close. And no one expected a nil. But they were on for the Lions, 24 to 14 there, says Jordan there. Oh, so he's saying no more points for the Sharks throughout the rest of the game. And let's move from that case, says Betty Wagon. Well, that one at Ozo, we have got there. I felt that pain in there as well. Yep. Definitely going to wear the Chiefs kit next week, though, just to try and heal the wounds. Currently 14 minutes in, and it's going to be another scrum feed here. Just sitting outside of the 22, Jane and Henry. So that one was almost having a little bit of the side shuffle going. It's a big push there from the Sharks. This will be very close to an advantage, I would think. It's turned around, and it's a penalty there to the Sharks. Okay, stepped out, lost shape there for, I believe that would have been PJ Borta. Unfortunately, the Sharks back, they look like they're going to be the dominant one of the two, so the Lions are going to try and find a way of stopping it from becoming more and more dominant in the later stages. But PJ Borta, he's going to have his hands full, definitely on slippery conditions. You can't exactly get your feet really locked into place. And I say Johnny Rose will play, uh, break his bong when he sees the result. And there's the Sebastian, he will. Kill and Bosch. Oh, he got too much on that one, and it did actually go dead in goal. And because of it, it does mean now that the Lions do get a little bit of reprieve. Currently in this game, I believe, is that a try? I think to lose might have just scored a try. But I could be wrong. It's looking pretty good for them. If they were able to score a try, I believe that was Peter Malwaka making his way forward. Did they get a try? Looks close. Yes, they did. So to lose, they didn't end up scoring the opening try. They mentioned to lose try, and their lines will recover. Sharks uh, have pushed their advantage. And Oz home seem on fire with the early starts. There's semi so a little knock on there from the Lions. And it seems like, I mean, at the end of the day, when you think about it, if there's water involved, the Sharks theoretically should be better than the Lions if we're talking animal-wise. Because, of course, the Sharks, they do live in water, whereas the Lions, they try and avoid the water. Have you ever seen a cat in a bathtub? Very rarely, because they don't like it that much. Have you ever seen a shark in a bathtub? Wherever that is, that is a dangerous bathtub that you probably shouldn't go near. Uh, Dan Bosch is having more off days uh, than on. So yes, Jermaine and Ozzy, we've got that well. Uh, to make it worse, my Canes should have won, and my second team Chiefs had that game. And there says Betty Wagon. Yeah, a couple of very close fixtures for those ones, of course. Or Super Rugby, or very close fixtures, I should say, for the Crusaders and the Hurricanes, not that other game between the Blues and the Chiefs, although last time it was very close between them. But Toulouse already winning 7-0 in that game. That's not the start of the match that Ulster would have been after here. Handling errors currently. Lions have had three. That one's going to be a big push from the Sharks. That ball's available at the back. Pepsi Porto Lazy takes it out. Now Hendricks uh, making up with Kerwin and Bosch. Now Makazole Mapimpi. It's a juggle there from Anthony Volomink. And it does end up bouncing up, and it will now be a scrum feed for the Lions. Now, I would expect quite a few scrums throughout this game just because of just how much water there is on the surface of the pitch. And as I roll it, Balakoon uh, back. Let's go, Ulster. Just pass it to that man on the wing, and I'll zoom to the try line. And they're going to have to find a way through the back of Toulouse because they've got big Dwayne Vermeule, and he's had a bit of experience playing up against France in the past. But... It's just a tricky one, isn't it? Because to lose normally a very structured Pieto Malvaka, actually almost rushing up and getting himself a turn over there. Okay, a couple changes taking place. I believe that's going to be Honey Duplessy getting his second chance. Whoa, who is that man? I swear that's got to be Quagga Smith's brother. He looks so similar. Ah, Gene Pierre Smith, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll be... That'll be why he looks so familiar. He is his brother. Or if he's not his brother, he's got to be a close relative because, boy, it looked like Quagga Smith had shaved his beard and was running off the field. It doesn't matter there. Come on, Ulster. And there it says Katie Dixon. Yeah, Ulster, to even make it close in this game with Toulouse would be pretty impressive as they will have home field advantage for the next game. That looked forward. And there you go. And also we have got there. Do it for the Dairy Girls, Ulster. There's Ulster Sebastian. But now the front row's going down. 
We're gonna have a scrum reset. I was a Cardiff down 14 0 against. Jeez, that's a quick start. Didn't they only start like 10 minutes ago, Stoney? <laughs> that's a very quick start to the match. I wonder if we've got it over here as well. Not a moment. I'm going to have a look. No, it's not going to let me. What if I open up another Spark Sport tab? Can I see Cardiff as well? Maybe. And yeah, go Cardiff sees Katie Dixon. That's the thing. They only show some games of the URC, which really sucks because, like, yeah, no, they don't show Cardiff over here, sadly. It's a bit of a shame, but now currently it is going to be the penalty advantage in favor of the Lions. Now they're going back for it. Number three. Under pressure, and I was a yep, 13 minutes. So, yeah, very impressive start to Cardiff's uh, champions. No, sorry, that's a URC, isn't it? Cardiff are slowly trying to sneak their way up there, aren't they? I believe. Right. It looks like there's an Ulster and Toulouse TMO decision that's going up. Too many games. I don't know who to support. And there's our Man United have lost again. Tosses in this Sebastian. Oh, that's an ugly one. Oh, he just almost broke his neck. The player, oh, that was a collision. It was. You'd have to argue, yes, he had eyes for the ball, but he lands on his head there for Ulster. That's not nice. I wonder what the role is for Champions Cup in the red card. Whether or not you do actually get all of the game off or whether you get to come back on for a little bit. Yeah, but now the Lions getting a little bit more territory here. The chance of winning this game for the Lions is 5%. I was like, how are you still up, lad, says Ed. I'm not sure, but we've still, got, we've still got this game and then another game after that, which is going to be Exeter Chiefs versus Munster. So I guess the bigger question for me is how is my voice still going? Because I thought it was going to give out about five hours ago, but it seems to be not too bad at this current point of time inside of the 22 now. And there's Yanni Duplessis getting driven backwards in a tackle by Robola. Now, once again, going to be available. It is Emmanuel Tuchuka this time. Getting the carry. Where's his brother? His brother will be lurking next to the breakdown, I would think. Somewhere around there, right. What happens in this game? It's a red card to Toulouse. Okay, that's big. That's very big. That's huge. And also, we've got that shocker last night. Blitzbox threw away their running streak away, or threw their running streak away against USA 12-7. to 7. Yeah, I did see that. And I think a majority of people, we're all in agreement, aren't we? We wish it was in like a final or something like that, or at least they still had the streak going into the final so that like it had that nice special feel. But now that it's a streak, now they've got to start from one again. But they do have the second longest streak in history, which is still very impressive for the Blitz box. And also we're there to lose with the red and ah, who says Katie there. So yeah, I think it's actually, I don't know if it's a 20 minute red card or whether you do get your man back uh, or whether they're down to now 14 for the rest of the game. Also who got red carded? It was the number 14 for, uh, to lose, I believe. And which teams should I support? That's a great question. Who should you support? You should support uh, Ulster because your name slightly sounds Irish. I don't know if you are actually Irish or not. I think we've discussed this many times that we can't quite work it out. And will you be commentating on the Sevens Rugby? I sure, uh, sure will be, is what I was going to try and say. We have got the quarterfinals tomorrow, also the semifinals, the final, the fifth to eighth place playoff games. All of them are going to be coming up on the Kiwi Lads channel tomorrow, so be sure to check that out. And we've all done the rugby gauntlet rather well, says Katie Dixon. We have. I'm proud of all of us. Oh. Okay, one of the cameramen just fell over. And then I don't flash a name across the screen. I'm not sure. And then I say, thanks, says Josh. No worries at all, mate. Who are you going for? And who do you think will be able to win the Sevens competition? So they went, oh, no wonder they were runner up to the Americans in their pool. And Sammy Sosa. And the worst thing is, now rather than getting to play Ireland, they have to play Fiji. And Fiji have currently looked like they've come back into the seven circuit and don't look too bad. But it was a good strike from Hendrix, so they had to show a replay of it because the cameraman did fall over. Hmm. Now, going back across here now for the Lions. They are sitting 35 metres out from their line. It's close to the touchline, but just in the field play at Mornay Funderburg, firing it back across into the hands of PJ Borta. Currently 22 minutes gone. Ulster, try, 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 try. It is an Ulster, try, 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 try. Nicely done, Ulster. And I think with the amount of odds, like Ulster to win was paying like five bucks fifty. 
But now I would say I'll still win paying like two buck fifty. And Munster's still paying three bucks sixty. I don't know why I'm saying three buck rather than just three dollars. I think I'm being fancy. It's not really Scarlet's are really struggling up against Cardiff. That is a fact. Advantage over is the call there. Europeans, that's what we're in, the Europeans Champions Cup, isn't it? Now, Funda Berg fires it back to Jordan Hendricks, that kicks it out oh, by the way, Katie USA have broken South Africa's 36 match unbeaten streaks. Be proud of the Eagles Sevens. Uh, Milan uh, Million are uh, trying to look up lineups. Million. Yeah. Ooh, Ulster now paying a dollar fifty six to win that game. They were five bucks. Who had them for five? They'll be rich, maybe. I don't know. The game's still early. Uh, but currently now it is going to be Mona van der Berg. Malia. Oh, was it uh, Juan Cruz Malia, maybe? In that one. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> and now kicking that one eye from Mona van der Berg. Yeah, that's going to be big for Ulster, though. Oh, little knock on on the ground. And the Sharks now have got themselves the scrum feet. I was thinking of Fiji, kudos for them to bounce back from that famous defeat to Ireland. When they pull eventually dust and cobwebs. Uh, dust it off the cobwebs. Uh, we're all gone and in the pumping of Japan and beating France too. Yeah, a couple big games for them. And I'm glad they made it to the quarterfinals because I feel like they wanted to pick up from where they left off. Cameraman did fall over. He's having a laugh about it currently. He's trying to hide his face, but the cameras have got him. And I uh, thank you. In the as I'll see as Gator Dex will be, I believe it would be Juan Cruz Malia, maybe, if I'm not wrong. But I didn't quite see the name. So I could be lying. Not very good at lying. I normally smile if I'm lying, and then it just doesn't work. Currently 25 minutes through. This game has already had more points in it than I believe the previous game's first half. And almost more games than we saw between Bristol and and sail for the full 80 minutes. And also maybe the Blitzbox will now have some competition in the final. I hope they do because I think they'll want to be challenged. And there's uh, and also maybe the Blitzbox. Oh, no, I really want to. Hi, everyone says Richard. Welcome in, mate. And Juan Malia, yes. He was in the Hikuare squad uh, that reached the Super Rugby final in 2019. And they're also playing for the Pumas in the recent rugby championship. Hello, and hello, welcome in. Hello, Richard. Welcome in. Here's Kenny Dixon and Patty. But now Jaden Hendricks say he's been told to use it here. Go and Bosch. Takes it in the pocket, goes for that kind of spiral kick and jinx. And now as I see Gary Dixon. There's a thing to lose still aren't out of that game, though. I would say. And also we have a laughing face from Katie Dixon. But currently, I thought I saw someone with an ice cream there before. And I was thinking, it's a bit cold probably for an ice cream. But if you're at a ground, you might as well have one. So Richard, he nice try. Hello, Richard. Yeah, I thought uh, you would be doing the European Cup. I mean, says Richard, we're doing a combo. So at the moment, we have got to lose versus Ulster in the far side of the screen, which they are currently sitting 7 all. We've got the game later on tonight, though. Exeter Chiefs versus Munster, which we will be solely concentrating on the Champions Cup. And then next week with no URC, it does mean that we can do a lot more of the Champions Cup also. And also, just when Fiji, New Zealand, and Samoa rejoin the series, and the US drop kicks of Africa. Uh, ending their winning streak. Yes, yeah, everyone thought it was going to be New Zealand or Fiji, like as one of the two big sides. But uh, I mean, they might still beat South Africa, of course, but only six in a row for the South Africans in terms of rounds that they have been able to win. That one's a good kick downfield from Makazoli Mapimpi. Let's get plenty of distance on that, about 50 metres to be exact. I just realised saying about before saying a number and then saying to be exact, that doesn't quite work. Because that's not really exact, is it? Also, Sammy Sosa and Venice have won three tournaments in a row. Time for someone else to taste the gold. There's our says Sebastian. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who does end up getting the job done. I think Ulster are going to score again here. And I think it's actually your boy, Balakoon there, Sebastian. Now, Jordan Hendricks that kicks it high. Any relation to Jaden Hendricks, ladies and gentlemen, do let me know. Now, Volmink taking up Werner Koch now, trying to fend off the tackle of Similani. But he has been able to wrestle him down quite nicely. Hendricks and now for the Sharks. Passing it off to Thomas the Toy, the captain. 
on his side. I thought they would have gone with Sia Khaleesi as captain, but they actually went with Thomas Batoya and Isaac Weber, their full point. And also, I love that the USA is fighting uh, for an identity in rugby, any rugby. And as uh, now it's a knock-on advantage for Vandenberg. They're going back for the initial knock-on here. That was a half yawn. I somehow hit it, but not really. Currently, Edwell Fundamur, we haven't seen a huge amount of him throughout the early stages. I believe he's taken a mark. And that is about it. He also dropped the ball just then, sadly. Now, currently, I believe the scrum feed, I mean, that's the thing. You've got Oxnashare, you've got Bongi Umbanumbi, and you've got Thomas Detoy as the front row. That is a Springbok lineup. Then for the other side, PJ Botta, Setoli, and then you've also got Yanni Duplessis. So you'd have to say that the advantage definitely goes to the Sharks. And that one, and also four, actually, sorry, I forgot. There were two uh, weekends in Dubai. And also, yeah, they need to try and take it to the 15s. And we're working on it. And this is Katie. Apparently now. About to go for this one. Nice feed of the ball from Jaden Hendrik, uh, Hendrikse. Going to kick it in behind. It's a big kick. It's a very big kick. It's a great kick. And that's a 50-22. Taking the quick throw stolen by Morty Vandenberg. And he's very lucky there. You're in front of the mark. So Werner Kocki is probably saved there by the fact that he was in front of the mark. Perry Baker might be the most informed player on the seventh circuit. There's yes, Sebastian. Yeah, he's phenomenal. Perry Baker currently. But it was a brilliant kick as well. We need to give credit. We have credit as too. That was a great kick from, was it Kerwin Boschel? Maybe Jane and Andrews. I think it was Jane and Andrews. I like to see USA get good at rugby. As I said, Betty Wagon, I feel like they've got that, I guess you could say, financial side of things that would really help propel the game forward as well. Like, imagine like a whole USA, like, sponsored. Oh, wow, that's the knee. Oh, Jordan Hendricks kicks it down, build. Going straight into the hands now of Anthony Volmink. He's willing to run the ball back, bumping off the tackle there. Off Similane, not an easy thing to do. Stolen on the ground, though. It's a penalty for the Sharks. And someone went, ah, he wasn't too happy with that one. Peary uh, Peary Baker, I should say, is legendary for sure. Denny Barrett is too. Mm. Mullet man himself, eh? Denny Barrett. The long-lost Barrett brother, I guess you could say. Volmink, I believe he got back up to his feet and then just kicked it. Yeah, no, he kicked it out of the hands of the man on the ground. You're not allowed to really do that. And I was like, oh, you've forgotten one man. I assume you're talking Carlin Isles, maybe. Young Carlin Isles or Kevon Williams might be another option that you could actually go with. Schroeder, Joe Schroeder, been very good. And I was like, yeah, we have our, our very own Barrett. And there's our CSK Dixon. And also, did you manage to watch Leinster Connacht last night? In my opinion, Leinster are danger next week, if not careful. That's the thing. They always have a close game with Connacht. And I love the fact that Connacht fights so hard in that match because without them fighting in it, it could have, like, on paper, everyone said Leinster by 10. I said Leinster by 10. I was wrong. But, like, everyone thinks that it's going to be a little bit more Leinster side. But it's actually, like, Connacht, are an up-and-coming side in the Irish department. So hopefully it is going to be close next week as well. And 100 uh, kg playing sevens, it's pretty impressive. And there as well, says Sebastian, and also I'm glad Leinster won, but I'm so tempted to say that Connacht deserved that when they fought and dug in. And I, I, by what I heard, and from what I've seen, a very physical game. A rugby and USA established a rugby culture from grassroots up to national team self. Then they might have a shot at 15s, even though MLR is a good start. It's uh, in its fourth season by now, if I'm right. Well, that was a big hit. I think Roman Skullman might have just got maybe. I mean, that was a nice. That was not a nice hit. And also, I was just legendary too. And they are right, Jaden and Hendricks. Sir. Who got hit here? I think it was Pepsi Butter Lazy takes it. And then from there, Ruben Skullman lines him up. Boom. Gets bumped off there for Skullman. It's tackled in the wrong place. That fly is still about, and I have no idea where it is. But it just buzzes. As flies do, but it just kind of chills out nearby. 32 minutes. That's gone by very quickly. I think it's because I know that we've still got one after this one as well. I'm going to rotate this a tad. There we go. We will go about there. There we go. Got a loop. 
Now, quick hands from Marius Lowe. He's in a mind. Anthony Volomink trying to chase after it here. And Makazoli, my pimpy charging it down, putting all of his body behind that one. And also, also they're working uh, their way into cricket. 2023 will be in a World Cup season. The major league, uh, major league Cricket. Can I drop a link? I wish to see Sebastian go for it, mate. No worries at all. It is sports related. It's like asking the teacher if you're allowed to like watch like YouTube. And then she's like, is it related to what we are doing? And you're like, yep. Even though it's not, it's just a funny cat video that you saw the other day. But it relates to cats. And that's like biology. I was always the kid who just did the work. <laughs> now they're nicely done by Schoolman. Tackle by Ox Nishay. You can hear the slapping and the slopping all over the place on the ground as the players do walk about. One on the Berg puts it up high. Ooh, it was a good kick. Although, he was outside of the 22 for Mornay van den Berg, and that is going to hurt him just a little bit more. That's what's happening right now. Uh, the MLA has uh, invigorated this nation, and Pee Wee Rugby is popping up all over the place, even where I oh, hear in Albuquerque there is now high school rugby. Grassroots rugby is a secret to Kiwi, and Springbok rugby success. And there says Stoney as well. Okay, they're saying that the TMO might come in the later stages, but not now. And also, Katie, any news? And there says Richard, and also we have got to have to get some of the baseball stars to switch to cricket, and the USA team could rip into some big teams. See Sebastian, yeah, because they've got some long hitters, and it's just really reteaching the technique, isn't it? Of, right, rather than going like that, you can kind of still go like that, but you've got to kind of ramp it up a little bit. That one, and also you've got to do a lot more running in between the wickets. They'll probably end up running out to the side trying to make a diamond. But it's all in the kind of learning curve, isn't it? Currently, it's still raining. The moment now, the Sharks, they are in possession only 22 metres out. Marcus Olima Pimpi with a nice continuous run for Pepsi Portalese. He went around the side. He's knocked that on, though. It's just gone straight through his hands. And now the Lions are going to have themselves another nice attacking opportunity if they do decide to go for it. Although, I believe more than likely, they will just go for the kickback. And also, no breaking news here, brother. Is out in the pocket. It is going to be Jordan Hendricks. Uh, kicks it out. And now 22 metres out from the line. It is going to be the Sharks who have got themselves another line out currently to lose. They are leading this game 10 points to 7 over Ulster after 24 minutes. And imagine that hitting a cover drive and the batsman chasing after the ball. <laughs> it would definitely confuse you. Definitely if there's a man out on the boundary. But hopefully... You know, hopefully that would be one that you can train out of them relatively quickly. <laughs> I mean, it would certainly lead to some comedic moments out in the middle. You know, just sit there with your bat up here. I mean, that's what Rory Burns does when you think about it, isn't it? He kind of sits up there like that. A very nice, like, cricket uh, as an alternative to baseball, uh, just rugby union, uh, is to gridiron and NFL. And also a nice kick, Kendrick's uh, to Charmaine. Currently now a little pop-up. From it was actually Hendrix at the Chicho. It's getting cool and Bosch cross to Tupoi. Almost stole. I think he's almost got. No, not quite. Oh, he almost had it. He fell on his face though. Kerwin and Bosch going for the cross kick. It's gone high. Makazoli Mapimpi takes it beautifully. And that, of course, makes the crowd erupt with excitement. That's got to be a penalty though to the Lions with not releasing. I'm going to be the turnover, Makazoli Mapimi. He's very wet at the moment. Anytime you go to ground, you're wet. And also, there is a reason what, for which I call Rory Burns a prick each and every time. There's the Sebastian. Yeah, it's interesting technique, isn't it? It's kind of like... He kind of does that face as if he's about to, like... I guess he can't tell whether or not he's going to throw up or not throw up. Like that. And also, Sharks lost that rhythm a little. Come on, boys. And Hamish, how did Pakistan beat Australia? I was shocked. And there says Richard. So I assume we are talking for the ODI series uh, for that one. Because, yeah, T20 went to Australia. Tess went to Australia. And then Pakistan, very good in the ODI. And I have two words. Baba Razam. That man was in insane form throughout, not just the Test matches, not just the ODIs. And also, he was there for the T20s. So I'm very nice. And I was like, yes, says Richard there. And I was like, okay, good to know. Even though uh, it will take years until, say, 2027 or 2031, perhaps the US, uh, to at least be on the same level as Japan 
uh, Fiji, uh, Italy, the region, our bosh, our big Rossi Colisi, sneaking board just a little bit more. Werner Cock, not a lot of space on that side. X Sevens man himself, yeah, Werner Cock, and also we have got the uh, Americans. We have to come to terms with the fact that cricket, uh, the purpose of the bat and the batsman is to protect the wickets in baseball. The purpose is to smash the ball hard in there as well, says Katie. Now still available for the Sharks, Kerwin Bosch. Once again, going for, that was a cross kick, but it's gone backwards as if it was actually worse than a pass, but they're going back for the initial penalty. Now, the Sharks, they'll be chasing nothing less than a bonus point here. They're currently 14 points ahead. I think you go for the corner. You've got two minutes left of this first half. You might as well give it a crack. See whether or not you can make your way over the try line. All right. It is PJ Borta taking some deep breaths. From the South and we have got the uh, well, the MLC. I uh, will be a T20 competition so they can stick to the savage at mentality. This is Sebastian. And also we'll get there one day, I believe in us. And that was from Katie. Hopefully, like that's the thing. I think the weird thing I found was when like the All Blacks were playing the USA and everyone was like, huh, the USA are losing by a lot. And it's like, yep, because that is literally what we did expect. Like they didn't lose, did they lose as bad as Tonga or somewhere around there? And Tonga are a slightly developed rugby nation type thing. Whereas the USA are still very new in the whole scheme of things. But it, it was just like everyone who thought that the USA were going to go out there and cause that upset win. And then when the All Blacks won, they were like, huh, I knew the All Blacks would win it. It's like, yep. <laughs> yep. That's that's what people expected. Know, at least in uh, Little Cricket 101, I will help them a lot, like MLR Season 1. Uh, and Rugby Union, now they introduce the rule, uh, rules of how it's played. Uh, yeah, well, sometimes you need smash ball in cricket. And also, uh, actually, another question from Rugby Later, why is Australia getting into 2027 or 2000 or 3031 Rugby World Cup? Uh, makes no sense to me. Wait, so that must be 2031. So I believe at this stage, they are pretty much, I don't think they've got either one confirmed, so they're going to try and lock both of them in just in case. And I would assume if they get 2027, then they'll forfeit the rights to host 2031. And I think the USA wanted that one. We're not wrong. Uh, facing cricketers' ability to contain their energy and fury. It's had better as us, this KG, and maybe uh, COVID related. And even we've beaten Tonga. Come on now, says Sebastian, for that one. Mm. So, who do Romania play next in the Ripper Charge? Sebastian, I always lose track of it. I know that Tonga's in there somewhere, but I don't think they play Romania, do they? I think that's on the separate side, separate side of the Ripper Charge. And All Blacks, one of the top five rugby countries still in this, says David. So, yeah. For that game up against the USA, like, it, it was going to be a win for the All Blacks. It's like normally, like, if the Springboks played Namibia or something like that, you're going to see a Springbok victory. But it's kind of how those little sides or the minnow sides in the World Rugby kind of rankings fight that kind of shows you whether or not they've got the potential. Americans would love a traditional cricket tee. And there as well says cricket. Oh, sorry, that was Katie, I should say. Makazole Mapimpi trying to kick it forward. No one can jump on the ball currently. It's literally football between the sides. I'm sorry, Similani, but you should have just let that one go back. Yep, Mornay Vandenberg knows what's up. And he kicks it back. Jaden Hendricks, so you know, I put in Vandenberg very late with that cheap shot. And now that is going to be the end of the first half. Actually, second best uh, just behind us in this is Tony. As I know, so we have got their tongue. We'll play the winner of the Asian qualifiers. Uh, winner goes to the World Cup. Loser uh, enters the Ripper Judge. Ah, yes. And my pimpy in there says Charmaine, and he's a dangerous player and almost was able to sneak his way through there. As between South Korea, Malaysia, and Hong Kong, under numerous, uh, normal circumstances, we should RIP, or sorry, we should rip into them all. And also, Boxer, unpredictable, woeful, or sorry, unpredictable, wonderful team and performance, says MH Choi. And maybe the top English speaking rugby country, my pimpy, best wing in the world. Exactly right. Like, Mapimpi is the definition of someone who's just worked his absolute behind off to get to where he is. Like, he's got natural ability, but it's alongside that that he's just fully committed to his craft, continued to keep on going. Why does, what is this? United Rugby Championship, Sharks versus Lions, ISO dumps? 
It's an interesting one. Is that like the sponsor? What is ISO dumps? Not sure what that is, but it's a sponsor possibly. Well, that's one of that. Currently now the game between Munster and the Exeter Chiefs is actually only a little bit away. It's going to be taking place in approximately an hour and 14 minutes time. Oh yeah, earlier Hamish, I called me Sebastian. And he has asked this, Betty, I did, because he did say that England needed to win by 40 points. And I was like, that's that positive mentality that Sebastian would have for himself, but I got it wrong. And I was over there, the box uh, can be their own worst enemy. Uh, politics are killing our game. Yes, he's stony as well. Yes, it's always rough when there's like the behind the scenes stuff where the guys aren't able to just go out there, play their rugby and just enjoy like the game that they love for like thing. And Tonga themselves will be stacked for the former or with former T1 nations. Players like Falau, as they shouldn't have any issues against the Asia champion, uh, presumably Hong Kong. The qualifiers, do they have them before the World Cup? Uh, Sammy Sosa, I guess, is the big question because I think that game's going to be taking place near the end of this year or maybe next year. And All Blacks are always a crowd puller and the benchmark of rugby are high performance. And there says MH Choi and, and Tiago. I'm looking forward to the Bulls, or not the Bulls, sorry, the Springboks taking on the All Blacks in South Africa. I feel like it's only right that we go over there after you guys. We're kind enough to come to Australia, I just realised. We didn't actually get to play in New Zealand, did we? We went to Australia, but still came over to Australia. Hi, right, Hamish, it's coming to 3 a.m. in the morning for you in New Zealand. It is. It's currently almost 3 a.m. And I still feel like I'm wide awake as if it was like, I don't know, like 6 p.m., something like that. And who would be best rugby nation with only home-born players, says David. Tricky one. Very tricky one. Very tricky one, because I don't actually know the origin of where a lot of players are from. Unfortunately, I know that, like, normally Southern Hemisphere sides have got quite a few Pacific Island players. Same with, actually, England. I do have quite a few in there. Who has South Africa got? I feel like South Africa probably got quite a few who are from South Africa. Scotland have got quite a few South African-born, I believe, but then lived in Scotland their whole life. For that one, a box will be uh, one, uh, but number two in there, says David. And I was just an educational guess based on what I know about the early history of baseball and the top 10 rugby countries to me, Ireland, All Blacks, France, Australia, South Africa, England. Make that top six, can't find four more good enough. And this is Richard. And also Tonga are focusing their attention on rugby league at the moment. They're seated as a pool A team. Uh, so it's a good chance they'll reach the World uh, Rugby League World Cup semifinals. That'll be a pretty big one for them. If that is the case, and also not France and there, says Charmaine, for their homegrown. I guess they've got a few. I guess you'd have to say not Japan. If you go on that one, it's a tricky one. I feel like you're probably looking at maybe like Argentina, but then are they all born in Argentina? Or are they born in different areas of South America? And France, a lot uh, is box and Ireland is, and Ireland and Wales. Ireland is another good choice. That one, Wales as well, I think, have a lot of homegrown, uh, homegrown talent. And yet we always have a full team of exports uh, playing for other nations. Says Danny and Ozzy, it seems like US cricket teams uh, will be based in Atlanta, New York, New Jersey, LA, Chicago, and San Francisco. And also the Argentina flag there from Josh Pennington. That one, and also Argentina maybe, says David. But uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think, unless, of course, because I guess we're not that familiar with Argentina, maybe, who knows, maybe some of their players were born in Brazil or Paraguay, Uruguay, just across the border. And then from there, they kind of all ended up in Argentina. Hard to say. And I was Argentina, uh, best improved team uh, in five years, says the MHO. I hope so, because it's a shame that they got taken out of the rugby championship and, or not the rugby championship, sorry, super rugby. And the Hikuares just don't really have a team for a competition at the moment, sadly. I feel like they deserve one. Like, they've worked hard. And that's why I love the fact that they are actually going to be playing a few games in Argentina this year for the rugby championship. Because at the end of the day, Argentina have been on the road for about three years. No matter where the games are taking place, they hop on a plane, they isolate, they stay away from their family and friends, and they play rugby. So it's great to see that they now get their home games uh, that they kind of deserve, I think. Yes, Josh Scotland too. Unbeatable. Uh, when in form, it's also says MH Choi and also wherever their box. I like Argentina, maybe Wales. Says David and also cricket the same New Zealand, uh, England and France. And there as well says Stoney for that one. And also I'll be willing to put New Jersey 
uh, from that list or pulled New Jersey from that list. New Zealand, uh, New Jersey is not what people think it is. And, there, and also we have got there, uh, they should bring back the Jaguares and put them in the URC to fight the development uh, team in the SL uh and the SLAR, yeah, I agree. I feel like the Higuares need some sort of competition. And yes, they can take part in the French leagues, the English leagues, all of those ones. But it's just not quite the same, is it? When you don't have them in the league that you actually want to see them kind of thrive in. And as I know, Wales isn't uh, in our level. And as I know, the Wales team is a mix. Half are ready to retire. The young players haven't had any game time together. Says uh, Charmaine, yeah, that's true. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing what Tane Basham can do in the future because he currently looks like quite an exciting prospect for them. They're actually showing a few of the highlights of the earlier tries in this game. Currently, the Shark, they are leading 17 points to three going into the second half. What was I going to look up? Oh, I was going to look up the Hurricanes kit because it was mentioned to me earlier on about it. And they said about how it would be the one that I would be most likely to buy, and they were very right for that. I'm going to see how much... A Hurricanes kit is. It's probably still $150 here in New Zealand. Okay, you can get the away kit for the old one. 2021. Yeah, Adidas Hurricanes home kit is sitting at $150 to be able to buy. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> that is quite a bit of the money. You can get the away kit for less. No, you can't. It doesn't exist. You can get a Hurricanes bucket hat for $50. It's a bit pricey, isn't it? All right, also we've got there. What is wrong with Wales rugby club teams? Uh, something seriously wrong. I have not won a club match for over two months. There's us, says Richard. And yeah, it seems to only be when they play themselves. Because Cardiff at the moment, they are beating Scarlets, I do see. Also, what's the opinion in New Zealand now uh, that South Africa teams are a full year in Europe, says David. I mean, for me personally, I feel like I'm probably a little bit more, I guess, level-headed about it because some people are probably fired up about the fact that they're not in super rugby anymore but for me i think like at the end of the day they've done what's best south africa we miss them and super rugby like it would be great to still have the bulls the sharks the stormers and the lions but like as long as they are currently i guess enjoying their rugby and getting an opportunity to not just go for the urc but also the champions cup is another one that they will be able to go for for the next little while and also we have got there, Charmaine. Uh, they say, oh, Warriors never die. Uh, they just fade away. Season make sure. And it's a horror year for Wales Club and International Rugby. And I wonder if Fiji, Australia, and even Georgia are giddy with excitement over uh, Wales' Im's, uh, imbecile, uh, uh, abysmal sorry, performance this year prior to France 2023. Okay, everyone's selling Hurricanes kits for $150. Why? I can't remember the, I think it's like, is that the one? Best three rugby teams at Springboks, Namibia, and Zimbabwe. Yes, yes, says Johannes. But yeah, and also Wales, old warriors retire only in wheelchairs and dentures. I remember seeing, I think, who was it? It was, what's his face? Lee Halfpenny. I was excited to see him play in that game up against, I think it was Argentina, or one of those real early games for Wales. And it was the first play of the game, and he just, like, his ankle gave out or something. It was very unfortunate. Okay. Now, e everywhere is $150 for a, for a shirt. Everywhere. If I was a child, I'd get it for cheaper. But I'm not a child, sadly. I'm a bit bigger. And I was aware that they are a Wales old. Oh, no, I read that one. And also, apparently, they went to for those cities because they are the area where cricket is most popular in the US. Says Sebastian there, but currently not too far away from the second half getting underway. Like I mentioned, we are going to be covering the game straight after this one between the Exeter Chiefs and Munster. And even though that live stream will get set up relatively late, I will still be going up pretty much straight after this one is finished. I will be setting up that one. Is that is going to be a 4.30 kickoff for them in that one. And I was like, oh, well, that changes things then. I'll probably go for the New York. Yeah, what? Well, they make good pizza there. Well, it sounds like, and not to be uh, dismissive of the Northern sides, uh, we love the serious competition against New Zealand and Australia team, says Stoney. And I think it was just that kind of, it kind of was the prelim for the rugby championship. Like, you could see South Africa sides taking on New Zealand sides, and then you go, in two months' time, we get to see these two guys go head-to-head, -head, except it's going to be the best of the best from both of the countries clashing rather than just the best of their kind of respective teams. Uh, but yeah, 
I hope that the rugby championship still stays there rather than like, I know that it was rumored that maybe the six nations could be on the cards for the South Africans. I hope that's not the case though. I hope we do get to see them stay there. And also I would have to back New York also. I'm very curious about uh, how they're going to name these cricket franchises. And as I like South Africa are going to play, I like that South Africa are going to play a rugby championship. Oh, sorry, Champions Cup, great for Ireland. But I also think All Blacks clubs uh, should be allowed to enter, make it a better competition. There's Richard there, and I'm sure that New Jersey is into cricket. And tonight in the second half, are we witnessing Sharks continuing to eat up the Lions? I think there's a good chance currently. They don't seem to be having too many errors at all. Just at this point in time, the penalties considered is probably the one thing the Sharks need to watch out for. They did give away five, but then the metres made, they had an extra 100 metres carried. And it is this game start of the second half yet. Not quite. Very close, though. Okay, now the players have made their way back out on the field. I think they were just waiting for a little bit longer, hoping probably that it would end up drying out a little bit. It didn't. It's still very, very wet. We'll go like that. There we go. We are all set up. And also sounds like a Club World Cup in the making. I think they were talking about possibly trying to set up that. Wasn't, uh, wasn't that on the cards? A little while, and then someone up top in the big board director said, nah, not allowed. And also, I'm excited to see what the actual gameplay between South Africa and New Zealand and Australia shows. Uh, they've all been trying out new ideas, says Charmaine. And yeah, it's only actually about two or three months away, which is going to mean that it will be very exciting to see it in action, and it will be here before we know it. I mean, the World Cup's only 500 days away, and that will be probably feeling like it's only two days, two days a week, though no, probably a little bit longer because they need a new jersey. And the other says Betty Wagner also, oh, the USA Cricket Association has their HQ in Miami in there as well. There you go. <laughs> I can't imagine what that looks like. I feel like it would be in a massive, like, would it be in a massive, like, warehouse slash, like, big apartment building probably. And see with some cricket nets underneath, hopefully, just so that they can all practice a little bit. But now it's going to be a good step here from top of eye, gets driven backwards. Or at least still on the side of the Sharks. And they will be looking to get themselves a bonus point when he had Vincent Tochoka. He was rushing up a little bit too early, I thought. But that one could have been offside advantage. And also, he's got the cricket jokes in there as well. Now, kick for the touch line. Doesn't go into touch line. The ball pulls up. And that is, of course, due to the fact that there is about 10 millimetres at least of rain on the ground. Now, currently, Anthony Volmink. Back in himself, you've got to be careful in these slippery conditions. And USA will host the T20 World Cup in 2024, so they'll debut their competition. New stadiums a year prior to the World Cup, says Sebastian there as well. So has that been actually confirmed that they have got the 2024 uh, World Cup? Because I know that if you – is it the same as football? How if you've got the World Cup, you actually qualify automatically in the competition. Now, Kerwin Bosch, big roster bongi on the number now, Henrik, so once again, Oxnashay just having a bit of a juggle with that ball. And the Lions get this one back. Also, we've got the Are You Doing the Soccer World Cup in November. I am hoping to. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. New Zealand might be in it, even if New Zealand aren't in it, though. I probably will end up watching a majority of the matches, which means that if I'm watching them, I might as well I'd be watching them with you guys as well. I say as well way too much. That's still annoying me. Every time as well. Just as well everything. I actually, I banned myself from saying it the other day. It worked for about five minutes and then it stopped working. He's bleeding from the forehead at the moment, unfortunately. So he's going to have to get some tape on that one. And also we have got the uh, well that, uh, or I well think of the last edition of the World Cup, Oman and UAE hosted it and neither were qualified. Ah, good point. Or were they in the were they in the playoff game stage, or like that kind of stage before the Super Twelve? I think Oman might have been, but I could be wrong there. And also we got that as well. See, there's pretty yeah, a few of them coming through. Currently, it's still raining quite heavily. It's the same. They seem to find the same group of ladies every single time, and they just show them repeatedly. That's not a lady. That is a man with glasses. Oh, I'll tell you what, you need one of those, you know, the glasses with the window wiper, the windshields on them. That would be perfect for him in this condition because currently it's very wet. 
still reigning handling error seven for the Lions. I know um, we're in the qualifiers here. I mean, they missed out on the Super 12, says Sebastian. UAE in the qualifiers, or did they? They probably missed out altogether, didn't they? The UAE. Who else was in there? Papua New Guinea? Did Papua New Guinea make it? I can't even remember the World Cup, and it happened like two months ago. You know what I was saying earlier on about like once you go down a sports track of one sport, everything about another one just disappears. That's what I've got for the Cricket World Cup. Perfect. Myself and Katie will be a fantastic, uh, will be or will a fantastic month with England and USA in the same group. Says Richard there and well Peacock or well Peacock. I uh, just switched the feed from the Toulouse games to the shoot of the Exeter game. It's coming up. Uh, I'm living in a time warp. Says Katie, they're in the sheds very early. They've got an hour and a half, don't they? The big man's or the big nan, sorry, is actually beating Benetton, which is a bit of a surprise at this point in time. I can hear the rain. Sounds like I'm next to a forest or a waterfall, like a rainforest. And Scotland, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Namibia made it to the Super 12. This is Sebastian and also Ireland beat the UAE. Says Richard there as well. But now passing it back across. We take him very nicely here by, I think he's the number 24, but I think that's because there was blood on his shirt, so he had to change it. Oh, Vincent Tuchuka. Good carry forward. Wrestled down. By a bongi Umbanambi. Now Vandenberg and you pick up gloves. A good shit cam. I've seen so many rugby man butts wrapped in towels. Says <laughs> Katie Dixon. Like too many rugby man butts. See, we don't get that over here. We normally just get like an ad for a ute. Which, I mean, if you like utes more than you like man butts, then it's perfect. You know? You see a lot of them. Or oh, Hendricks are get hitting in the spine. Or get hit in the spine, I should say, by Gerbran Grobola. Oh, still available for Vandenberg. They need to try and get themselves back, which makes you excited. And there says Paddy. I feel like that sounds like the start of like an infomercial, but I enjoy the Utes. George enjoys the Utes as well when we were watching them fly by. What is this? Okay, games that have taken place with Real Madrid and Chelsea. That's going, hey, I've got a shit cam. Katie, I've got a shit cam. Jeez, I'm behind. That's now just coming through here for me. And you've had it about five minutes ago, but I did actually see some fellows sitting there. Currently, the, li the Lions mascot has found two females. What a surprise. And I was like, woo-woo. Uh, what do you mean by uh, like uh, by like youths as well? Woo-woo. What do you mean by like youths? Like you utes, 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 utes. <laughs> as in the vehicle. Sorry, the Kiwi accent is just kicking in a little bit. And I was like, yeah, we well, legally aren't entitled to watch the TV feeds. But they just switched to random solitary cameras around the parks, many of them intimate. And yeah, and also you should, uh, you should see the video of the Munster player with no shorts on, Katie, says Richard. Uh, currently now passing it or taking that quick mark there for Horn. I was like, ah, sorry, and this is, this is Sebastian. You know, it's the, it's the Kiwi accent. Guns through and utes like trucks in there as well. Go with their fish and chips, or you don't eat your fish and chips in the ute, or else you get some greasiness in there. George eats everything in his vehicle. I've seen a chip that's been sitting down on the ground for a while, and all sorts. I think, oh no, that was the try from earlier on for Toulouse. And they can't afford to, to lose this game. Ha, ha, ha. Jesus, a long half time break in that one. They're still chatting. Currently now, Sharks with meters made 159 compared to the 32 of the Lions. And Bongi Umbanumbi once again throw this one in. Stolen by the Lions. And even though the Sharks seem like they were building up a huge amount of momentum, it's stopped. Well, they've pretty much been stopped in their tracks now. Try and make their way through. But Pupignan, after 34 minutes, that's a bit rough. Their game's only seven points to three. Wait a minute. No, it's not. The try must have been disallowed. What are they on about then? Wait, was there a try or was there not a try? I think there was not a try. But they gave a try to Pepignan, but then it must have gotten cancelled. And he's now on kick for the corner. Uh, what's Toulouse liking it? Liking it a lot. Uh, liking it a lot. Rugby jokes. And now, uh, yeah, Munster butt cam in there. Says it was Katie Dixon. And also, I wonder if it's in their contracts. Look, kid. Uh, people uh, get to look at your butt in this business. <laughs> I mean, 
it's an interesting way of wording it, I guess you could say. Listen, man might have been... You know, it doesn't anyways, it might be a two-half game unless the Sharks completely snuff out the lines. Yeah. Yeah, currently still working hard. Try and get themselves. Oh, it's nicely taken there. Once again, big tackle from Makazoli Mapimpi. And it's a penalty there to the Sharks. Right. 40 metres out. 50 metres out, in fact. And it's going to be 33 minutes left in this game now. They are going to have a chat show for a majority of half time. I didn't realise it was so long. Like, they're, they're just chatting all the time. And it's been like half an hour. And I was like, jokes and butts, this chat is lovely. And when you look at his butt, and there is a sketchy text. And, but that's how that kid becomes a man, says Sebastian. Come on, Bosch, going to be lining up this kick now. Currently, Kerr and Bosch, 52 metres out. This is not going to be an easy kick for him. I mean, but like I mentioned, the next live stream that we are going to be doing, it is going to be the Exeter Chiefs. They will be taking on Munster and what should be an exciting game of rugby. That will be starting at, I believe, 4.30 is when they are kicking off. Yep, 4.30, so an hour and 16 minutes time to that one. And, yeah, that is long, normally only 10 minutes. So it's not just me that feels like they have taken, like, an eternity to get back underway. I was going to be going over for Kill and Bosch. It's a good kick. A couple of people practicing their swimming with the goggles and the cap on, but now I make the score 20 points to three. Hopefully they get back underway soon. That's the thing. I always find Northern Hemisphere games... Like when we're at halftime at like a Gallagher Premiership game, it just feels like it's five years that we're sitting there. But normally we just show a random video from the past, which gets us by. Even though we slowly like, I guess, oh no, not gone from Kerwin. That's Jono. No, that's not Jono. That's Vernon Cock. I don't know who Jono is. I was like swimming. Is it raining that hard? Well, they did this oh, kind of their swim caps on and their goggles and they were going like this. And then, yeah, Bosch, uh, he found... His sound, uh, sand bucket, and also let's go sharks. Says Josh for that one. But I guess the big question, ladies and gentlemen, sevens tomorrow. Who is going to be watching it? And also, which game of the quarterfinals are you guys looking forward to the most? First game: Australia versus Argentina. Second: South Africa versus Fiji. Third: New Zealand Samoa. And then the fourth will be USA versus Ireland. And they are going to be taking place all in the middle of the night in South Africa, I believe, or very early morning. For you guys, Australia and Argentina is at 4.28 p.m. New Zealand time. Be right back, need a beverage. I was on too focused in chat. I forgot about the rugby. And there's us, there's Patty at the moment. It's been a bit of a stalemate for the past few moments. So we haven't missed too much. And it's just a frenzy at the moment. Like the Lions can't roll back into this game. I'm liking the puns. I need wake up drink, says Patty. We're going to have a couple wee sips. Okay, now for Big Nan scored. Ox Nash here. I'm slowly uh, wetting the vocal cords. Nice ball, Volta Manky knocks it on though. Uh, Manuel De Chuka passing it across. It's going to be, oh, it's a big bit of contact. There's been a lot of that today. I said it's a scrum advantage. Kick downfield, advantage over now on the halfway line. It will be Kerwin Bosch. It's a kick up high. Volming trying to line it up. It looks like it's going to be an awkward one to take. It does bounce back onto the side of the Sharks, though. But now keeping this one alive, Kerwin Bosch gets shut down pretty quickly. The Lions almost able to turn it over. And OMG, they all sound so good. But uh, USA uh, might surprise Ireland. And that one says, I mean, and also the Lions are struggling in the rain because... Uh, their swimming is not great. That's what I was saying. Have you ever seen a kid in a bathtub that looks like it's enjoying itself? Enough said. <laughs> to play, kick that one. He ended up slipping. Pepignan versus Benetton is seven points to Pepignan and three to Benetton. That is a very low scoring game. There's actually been quite a few low scoring games across the competitions. Lately, how did Saracens go? I think they had a game yesterday, didn't they? Did they end up dominating? In the round of 16, yep. Yep, 
Oh, actually, they're not actually at round of 16 as of yet, but Saracen's winning 55 points to five, one upping Edinburgh, who won 54 points to five. And All Blacks has the gold, South Africa has the silver, and USA has the bronze there. Sebastian's prediction for that one. Yeah, I think the big match for me is Fiji, South Africa. Are we going to get to see the Fijians just go out there and play like they did in their last game up against Japan and no one plays rugby? I went in the rain except the Scots. And there's Sir Charmaine. Apparently, once again, they are showing all of the females at the ground. There seems to be, I swear someone mentioned that one of the other ones, how it's like, it's specially set up. So they show plenty, although now they're showing a child for a whole different reason. Apparently, it's quite rainy there at the ground. Still, those stands look very steep in the background of Cape Town Stadium, by the way. The Gloucester versus Dragons, that has taken place a little bit later on. Biarritz versus Toulon. And then alongside that, I believe, in those two games at 4.30, it's going to be Stade Francais and Racing 92, and then Exeter versus Munster as the other matchup. And that will be kicking off in an hour and 10 minutes time. We will be starting five minutes beforehand with that game. And then alongside that, we've got the last 16 matchups that are taking place. Hopefully, we will be awake for these two. It is going to be Montpellier versus the Quins tomorrow night at 12 a.m. Pepsi Puta Lazy does get close. And All Blacks gold, Fiji silver, and USA bronze. And as I just think that today's loss with both infuriate and motivate the box. And also they're going to come out blazing tomorrow. I think that's close to a goal line dropout. Yes, it is. It's going to be just towered up there. One of the mature new brothers, he was excited for that one. And then Clement versus Leicester is going to be a little bit harder to do because it is a late two night game with it being at 2.15. But saying that, we are currently sitting 3.18. So I guess it just depends on how awake I am. If I'm wide awake, we'll just do all of them. But if I'm half asleep, like sitting here like this, we might do less. <laughs> but by the end of today, we would have done about 14 or 15 hours worth, which is a very good effort. And also New Zealand and USA uh, seems predictable compared to the other two tougher teams or tougher games for Australia versus Argentina and also Fiji versus South Africa. Interesting quarterfinals indeed. That one, although saying that, the way that Samoa played in their last game showed that they've got a little bit of fight in them. So it makes me wonder, because yes, they were playing up against Spain, but they had to fight hard from behind. And then they also won their second game, didn't they, Samoa? They dominated England. Sorry, Sebastian. That they didn't, or no one actually expected that to go that way for that game, or at least not that one-sided. All right, but now currently 53 minutes through. And now Jordan Hendricks, I believe. They are slowly working their way up. Penalties conceded of four. Well, sorry, actually seven and seven for both of these two sides here. As I'm surprised, Japan uh, didn't do better, says Charmaine. They do struggle a little bit in the sevens, but sometimes they're that kind of side in sevens that can cause an upset to a team that really didn't expect it. So I think so. Yes, they lost to Fiji like 62-0. But then they also can have a close game with teams every once in a while just to throw them off a little bit more. Like they had a relatively, was it a close game with Australia? Maybe. Might have been a close game with the Aussies. No, that's a lie because they aren't even in that group. Fiji, was it a close game with Ireland actually as their first opening game? Oh, nicely wrestled down there. No, that might also be a lie. I think there was another team involved in that one. They've been told to use it now. Firing up the box kick. Chasing after this one up of the Lions. Anthony Volomink goes up. It's going to be possibly a little knock on. Though actually it goes backwards now. Werner Koch. Oh, hard on the knees there for that man. Our inside under 18. Six Nations. Ireland versus France. Uh, Ireland 13. France uh, 6 half time. There's off for the under 18s. And the women's Six Nations must be just around the corner as well, is it? Uh, international women's rugby, 24 minutes time. And that is going to be England versus Wales. Followed then by, I think they've got another game straight after that, don't they? Why am I in 2021? 2022. Gee, 74-0 for England over Italy was impressive. Uh, but yeah, they've got the game between England and Wales in 23 minutes time. Scotland versus France uh, in 20 hours time. And then in one day's time, it is going to be Ireland versus Italy for the women's side. And also we've got there uh, 30... 36, 14, uh, 38, 7, and 62. Uh, nil, they struggling. Although that first game, for them to have 14 points on the board, it seems to take Japan just a little bit longer to get into their competition type thing. 
Like, I think if I try and find them and their previous results, they always are slow starters in competitions, but it's that next game after that that they seem to start to come a little bit more right. I completely forgot that Australia played in the seventh series, says Sebastian there. And yet Japan unsurprisingly got bumped by Fiji 62-0 for that one. Right, we will click on this one. Where are they? Japan. Oopsies, they moved. Uh-oh, I clicked another button. Why do they pop up so many things? <laughs> well, we are just getting the change, but also there is a change happening in the game. And that is going to be getting from Beard. And no, it's not yet. They have actually decided to save him for a little bit later on in the game. And instead, it is going to be Nochi making his way out there. How have I ended up in the... Oh, I'm in the women's hockey. Since when did that happen? <laughs> Okay, step out, lad. It sounds like there's a little bit something going on between a few of the players in the line-out. And I'll say, uh, yes, try Ulster. Ooh, tis indeed. I was uh, uh, well, uh, they beat England by over 40 points. And there's, there's Batty Wagon as well. That was a good point on the Brave Blossom 7s uh, on their slow start prior to picking up pace eventually. there. So they just take a little bit longer, I think, to build up. But when they get a massive win, like... They had a close game with Jamaica, which was expected, I guess you could say, a couple times. But they won against Kenya, 26 points to 17. That is a huge win for them uh, in that regard, just because Kenya are a tough side to be able to beat. They beat Canada, 21 points to 12. In December, they were beaten quite badly by a few of their other games. Uh, Robert, every once in a while, like Great Britain, they had a game 17 points to 12 in the Dubai Sevens. They beat South Korea. And also, they had a game up against Fiji 24-19. And I was like, England have been horrific. And Singapore, mm, not the best for the English, unfortunately. Their first game is actually going to be, I believe, up against Wales. As their first one kicked him behind here nicely. And well controlled by Max Wane. Now kicks it towards the touchline. It's a big boot. And taken nicely on the 22 by Anthony Volmink. And now no wonder Samoa run through them. Or right through them. Says Sammy Sosa. The Rude Roots getting his first carry in the number 19 jersey. But yeah, it was actually Bella Clune once again. He was able to score himself the try for Ulster. Picked him behind, nicely taken by the Lions. It's certainly wet out there at the moment, that is for sure. Picked him behind from Henriksa. Waits for that ball. Volmink takes it nicely inside of his 22. And now trying to fire it back. Left boot. He's almost, oh, he almost kicked that out on the full. It's going to be all right. From, yeah, England versus Wales. That is the game in 11 hours time at 3 p.m. I think I'll still be sleeping at that point in time. Possibly. So I'm not too sure what time we're setting up the live streams. I think it will actually be probably later on tonight after the next live stream. We will have, in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will have everything sorted out for that one. And then i got to try and decide. Because the thing is, I could stay up all night. But then the problem with that is I'll probably end up being... Like, if I get too tired, I'll crash before the finals, and that is the last thing I want. So I'll probably end up sleeping for, like, five or six hours. Island Rugby Sevens beat Fiji last night, says Richard. They did indeed. We were able to get themselves a monumental win. They were $5.20 underdogs. I couldn't understand why, though, because Fiji have not played in a very long time, and I was actually back in the Irish in that matchup. That was a little bit high from Jordan Hendricks. Uh, I was still trying to get that ball. Oh, okay, it's on the side of the Lions. Looks like it's quite a gritty, grindy battle on the ground. Andre Warner kicks it down. Now Kerwin Bosch with a great kick. 50-22, he gets it. And it's an absolutely tremendous kick from Kerwin Bosch there. Apparently, oh, Ulster's dropped the ball. That is not good. It's not what they would have been wanting. Currently in the Challenge Cup at halftime, very low scoring game. It is currently sitting as uh, Benetton at three points, Perpignan as seven for their halftime score. And also, we've got there, they did, uh, or they did uh, only to be runner up in the pool on points. Differential defense Fiji were rusty returning from the series exile. And as I said, Semi Sosa. Now, yeah, ready to throw this one in. Bongi Umbanumbi is taking it. Also, tried to lose, says Richard. Oh, yes, in the celebration. Stay wise. Well. Someone got like a firecracker in the crowd or something. All the smoke just ended up coming out to lose. 
have just scored themselves a try by the looks of it. Bongi on Benambi at the back now with the rolling more. Only 10 metres out here for the Sharks and it continues to drive and it drives some more and it goes over the line and it's the try to the Sharks. And Bongi on Benambi certainly celebrating that one for a sight. And currently, this score line is very flattering for the Sharks, but the Lions haven't really shown anything that might change the momentum of this game. Bongi on Benambi is fifth career try. He's done brilliantly there. Like they say, the driving more connection there between them. I was like, right time, says Charmaine. Just rolling forward here for the Sharks. That was going to be very hard to stop. Once they started getting that go forward, it's going to be tricky to even slightly slow it down for these Sharks. But they go over to lose, I believe, just scored themselves a try. I think they have said that it is a try and it is going to be available now for the kick, or is it? Wayne Barnes is in charge. At the moment, I think they're still looking for it. And yet the Sharks are of Durban are thriving. Yeah. And yeah, they're doing very nicely for themselves. And they don't really look like slowing down either. Okay, I think it's actually a no. Is it a no try for to lose? Okay, I'm not too sure what's happening in the Toulouse game and disallowed. Okay, that makes more sense. So a little knock on, I think that was from Wayne Barnes, but now Kuhn Bosch lining up this kick does get it over. And now 61 minutes into this game, it is going to be 27 points to three. Now I did pick for the Sharks to win by 30. I predicted 42 points to 12, which I don't think is a possibility here at this point in time because the Lions, that would mean that they get three penalties. For themselves, which I doubt they will be taking at this stage when they are 27 points to three down. But that is going to be, I believe, the third or fourth try for them. I believe that's three tries. Yes, it is. So now all they need is one more and they will get themselves the bonus point. Now, big run for from Noshe. Up to 22 meters out from the line here. And the Sharks, once again, are going to have themselves another kicking opportunity here for Jaden Hendricks. So, but anyone who is new, but the channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We've got Munster versus Exeter Chiefs happening in only an hour's time. So be sure to check that out also. Big hit. Huge hit there on the midsection of a Frank Horn. Or in fact, sorry, that was actually Juan Horn. Good counter right there. A little bit of a wrestling match going on between a couple of the players in the background. Tempers are flaring. Now ball on the inside. The Tachulka brother link up. Oh, put it down. Vincent Tachulka there. And now they have got the option. If you bring on Duplessis. Uh, brothers, or if you bring the Duplessis brothers back on, penalties will fly, says Jermaine. And also we got the draw, says Jermaine. And that one, uh, I don't think a draw could be on the cards for this one. Unless you are talking Ulster to lose, maybe. And that one, and also we have got there, uh, I said 46-17. Did indeed, I have got all of them start, I believe. What else? We have 35-12 to 12 for Bradley. That's not looking a mile off. And that one, and also we have got there 30 to 16 from Sebastian. And also 43-12 or 43-17 for Stoney there. And also when are the uh, sevens quarter finals being played? I will give you the New Zealand times uh, if that's all right. I'm not too sure about what time it will be for yourself, depending on whereabouts you are. But I can tell you New Zealand time-wise, it is going to be, first of all, First semi-final taking place at 4.28 p.m. New Zealand time. So I'm not sure what that conversion would be, but that is Australia versus Argentina. Then 4.50 p.m. is Fiji versus South Africa. New Zealand versus Samoa at 5.12 p.m. And then the USA, they will be taking on Ireland at 5.54 p.m. Also, we've got, it seems like the Joburg boys aren't looking so good. And there is also Sammy Sosa. Apparently now still going to be available once again here for the Sharks. And they've had a majority of position and an endless list of bad predictions. Uh, we do keep, or do well to keep our money lads gambling not for us. <laughs> There's a thing like, I'm terrible at predicting. So I always feel so bad when someone's like, oi, who's going to win the game? Or do you think that this multi sounds good with me putting them like they're going to lose by less than 20? I'm like, mate, I have no clue. Like I just make up a number normally for my prediction. I don't really think about it. Just say a number, hope it's right. It's now going to be kicked down field for Gerwin Bosch, close to the touchline. And now it will be Horn. Once again, Chart. <coughs> Back down the field. 
the voice is going. You go kick downfield from Von Mink. Oh, yeah, I got my PG tips. I want to miss. And there's our CSK Jackson. You did miss a try for Bongi on Benambi. Other than that, though, Ulster and Toulouse currently 13 points to 12. And what is a very close game for Pignan? Also, just slightly leading. So, two hours from me, as I says, Richard. What? So, two hours for me. So, where about to you located, uh, Richard? Are you sure, bro? I have 100 bucks ready for the bet. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, it's so much pressure. And I literally have no idea. Like, so I always give like really bad answers, such as like, I almost say that both teams are going to win just so that I can get out of that one without costing someone money. And I was like, Island. Ah, okay. So you guys, that will be nice and early morning, won't it? Probably like 6.30 a.m. Uh, but the Irish game will be a 7.30-ish a.m. game, I think, somewhere around there, maybe. Uh, if I'm not wrong. I was like, going to bring home a few boxes when I return from England in May. See, Sebastian are currently on the halfway line. The Lions be trying to build up a couple more phases here. Oh, Robin Scorman, he did get hit extremely hard in an earlier challenge of Pepsi Buta Lazy. Did bump him off. A nice little overlap on the outside. It will find a murder. Finally, this man gets a bit of space to work with, but it wasn't a lot. Marginal. Down the wing in also South Africa. And there says Jordan. Okay, so I will quickly have a look and see what the South Africa time is. South Africa time. Okay, it's currently 5.55 p.m. for you guys. So that means it would be a... So the South Africa game... One moment. I'll be able to do the maths here in my head. Slash, I've got to look at this thing. So South Africa's game up against Fiji will be at 6.50 a.m. South African time. And we will be live for all of those games on the channel. And then Ireland, they are playing at uh, 7.30 p.m. Yep. So that is their game up against the USA. And big sip, 10 out of 10, grab some marmalade too, brother. And there says Katie Dixon. I don't think I've ever had marmalade, if I am not wrong. Probably should try some things. But then the game before that, if we were to do that one, it would be Kenya versus Japan. But I think I'll still be asleep at that stage. More than likely, but now currently, Kerr and Bosch once again looking for the offload. Just sold the dummy as if he was going to pass it. And now he's just been able to hang on to it a little bit longer for Kerr and Bosch. Available at the back now. We have Bongi Umbanambi once again with a good carry forward. He's been dangerous throughout this game. I'm talking about the one side of Derby. I can to the first one. That is true. It's definitely not been what we were expecting. And Jesus says, David, welcome in, mate. Good morning. I guess I should say. Early morning here in New Zealand, of course, currently a lot more one-sided than the last game that we did see between the Stormers and the Bulls. Oh, little knock on there on the ground. I'll back Ulster since they are the Irish base side. And then there's fine cut, or there's fine cut and thick vintage cut. Uh, that's tad more bitter. Love marmonade and morning, David. And there it says Katie Dixon. I was like, hey, Adi, hey, brother, good morning to you. So is marmalade like jam except like something else? Like, is it like jam without the sugar? No, I don't know what marmalade is. Maybe that's another video. Hamish tries marmalade. That would be an interesting one. George would probably hate the stuff. Depending on what it is. Oh, we actually still want to do the video. And George is keen for this as well. George tries fruits. And George tries vegetables. We're going to have him try. Oh, we put different ones. And morning, mate. Nice to see you here. Says Betty Wagon and also wherever they are. We're leaving you, Ulster. Says Katie Dixon. Now it's got sugar in it. Says Katie Dixon. So what is a marmalade? I'm going to look up marmalade. Marmalade. What is it? Fruit preservatives. Is it just jam? Is it jam? It includes the peels of the citruses. Peels of the citrus. English breakfast marmalade. Ah, so it's pretty much, is it just the, sh like it leaves every part of the orange in it rather than just, I guess, the middle part. And mama got laid. And there says Jordan, she did. And that's how I'm here. No, I can't say that, can I? <laughs> that was a regular George Rapes. Chalky milks. And he does love himself a chalky milk. I want to blindfold him though so that he can't tell which ones it is. It was like morning, Sebastian, Katie, Patty, and Amish. Says down the wall, welcome. And I also should hammer to lose because to lose down a player. And then, yes, it's a preserve. And that, oh, sorry, me, <laughs> says your name for that one as well. And also, we have got there. I add marmalade is good. And there, says Betty Wagon. 
and I've had marmalade. Is it any different? So it's different to jam. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna have to try it. My uh, marmalade is quite similar to jam. Uh, yes, you get orange lime and Seville or Seva marmalade are uh, more tart than jam. So this is Charmaine. All right. Okay, I'm learning a lot at this stage because I did not know what marmalade was. You can make orange marmalade in 11 hours, 10 minutes. Sounds like a bargain, that one. And I was like, I've always, uh, I always have marmalade. And there says David the Mott. So do you put like, is it marmalade? And then you put your butter, like is it butter underneath and then marmalade? Or do you go without the butter or the margarine or anything? Apparently it's something that many our families prefer to make themselves. Says Katie Dixon, now Machunu close to the Dutch line. He's gone into Dutch there. And also, we're going to know ways. And there says Yadi, and also a uh, uh, yellow orange uh, like jam. And there as well, says Richard. Hmm. I'm just looking at a bottle of it or a tub. It's actually a glass jar. Marmalade is a fruit preservative boiled with sugar and water. With a peel, so it's bitter, made from bitter orange. Mmm. I was really, I like a thick piece of toast with a thin layer of butter and then a thick layer of marmalade. The butter marmalade and cheese. And then orange marmalade is the deadly one. I mean, so damn good. Or damn good, I should say. Never that one. But Machunu close to the try line, unable to quite work his way over the line, though. Apparently, five meters out, Kidon van Fieren. Let's throw the ball, and LaRue roots, he fell awkwardly, but he's all right. His knees are still intact, which is always a great start. Now waiting for it. Around the side, it is going to be Gerbrank, Robola. Around the side this time, that looks close, and that's going to be the try there. Who was that? Who got over? I want to say it was Pepsi Butter Lazy, but it might have actually been Nochia. Yes, it was. It was Nochia, and also, damn, y'all, that's a meal. And there it says Katie Dixon, so it is the orange, the butter, and also the bread. All right. That could be an interesting idea. Can you have it on like a cracker or something, or is that really weird? Like, would you have like a marmalade cracker? I mean, good grief, y'all. And there. Uh, but would you? Would you like put it on? What about pancakes? And can you make me one and set it here? And there's us, this Benny Wagon. I mean, I think the bread would be mouldy by the time it got to you, Patty, from the US. As I guess you can, says Richard. Okay. Nice little cracker on top. But yeah, at the moment, the loser are under a bit of pressure here by the looks of it. But still 57 minutes into that game, and it is 13 points to Toulouse, 12 to Ulster, a rugby or marmalade. And there says Jordan, it's a great question. Really? A marmalade on a scone all, or a scone, depending on whereabouts you're from, I guess. Over here, we call them scones. Decent. Although we also say when someone gets like hit in the head, they get sconed. So I don't know where the difference is in the air. Uh, the pancakes also. Uh, I'll post mate a loaf of bread. And then also cream cracker could work, says Char uh, Charmaine. And I don't know, Ulster knock on. And also sure you can have a marmalade cracker. And yes, you can, says Richard. I'm learning. Learning so much. Currently now 27 minutes. Or sorry, not 27 minutes through this game, but that is going to be Another try, and now they move themselves up to 34. And also, why not commentary? IPL, it is just due to the overlaps currently. Unfortunately, there's so many overlaps that we have got for the rugby. Like, rugby's always been our number one priority. And then when we get the time, we do do as much cricket as we can. But the IPL, they're normally on at unoppor unopportune times. Is that the word? Inopportune times over here in New Zealand. With it being either 10 p.m., which normally has rugby on, or 2 p.m., which normally has rugby on, or I have my eyelids closed. And also marmalade thumbprint cookies. And there's all says it was Katie. And also try Ulster says it is. That's a big boy. Who's that? He's one of the front rows, isn't it? Oh, sucks. And there's us says Jadane. And also over there, you can basically I put marmalade on anything and nearly anything or everything. Wish I had some on crackers with the two coffees I had. Also, you did say the Sharks will win by 30, though. I'd say that your prediction is still on. See, Sebastian, yes, not a mile off. Really, I'd like to see some sort of fight from the Lions, though, because it just hasn't really been that, is it? Apparently, they are still going to be available, right? They've got themselves in a tackle. That looked a bit high. From Machuno, who is that man? He's number 24. He's got blue hair by the looks of him. And the Roo Roots is just all over the top of him and trying to crush the little fella. 
And also, we've got that marmalade as a rich jam. Maybe it's perfect uh, on a piece of toast. And get an Ulster. There says Sebastian Wright. It's a high tackle. As the call from the referee. See, that's the thing. There's still 20 minutes left in that game. And it's very close. All wrapped up uh, for the home team from Durban. So yes, Sammy Stoes and Ozzy, everyone is invited to my house for a marmalade party. And there says Katie Dixon. Question, could you put marmalade on a piece of orange? Oh, it's just this he's really well and truly wrapped, I do see. So I think they might have been Jordan Hendricks, possibly. And also, we that today, I played my first ever game uh, as an eighth man from being a prop. I was also having uh, my first crack at being a skipper. We lost 45 uh, to 12. I managed to score the second try in the second half. Nice. Always a very good start. So number eight, to get to go off the back of the scrum a little bit. And yay, what time? And there's us, his better wagon, also marmalade on a piece of orange, meta marmalade. And you have the last try, the Lions. Currently now trying to drive their way forward and no chance, says Richard. Oh, that one. Now currently waiting for it. And also extra time, says Jardine. Or Jardine. Jardine? Jordan, sorry. And also we got there. Uh, I would not be advertised, Irish. Or I'd not be advised, Irish. Okay. So too much of a good thing, I guess you could say. About marmalade on a banana. Is that just weird? Oh, almost charged down for Biota Chamberlain, but he does get it into touch very nicely. Now, six and a half minutes left and at this one, and currently the Lions, Biota Chamberlain saying, I kicked it a bit further down there, didn't I? And my late on anything and everything is basically awesome as long as you prefer. And there's all. All right. I might have to try it. We'll be like, will it marmalade and just put it on a whole heap of random things? Who's banana? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I guess... Well, I was going to say, I guess, my banana, but then I realised that that could sound slightly bad, of course, but as in, like, you know, the supermarket banana, just from a, from a, from a thing. What's it called? A bloody thingy my bob, fresh, fresh area. And sticky toffee pudding was one of those things that changed my life when I tried it. Yeah, and also, over there, also no hope. And there says Richard. I was going to try the lion's. We we'll have to wait and see whether or not they do get over the line. You might be a little bit further ahead of me, or should I say over the line? Had to do it. Now, going to be a rust with the ball in hand, and also Lions versus Marmalade. And there says Katie Dixon, what a combo, eh? I've realised the scoreboard's a bit ahead, isn't it? And Marmalade smoothie, it might be rough. That sounded like I was being a dog there, didn't it? And also, Amish needs some marmalade on his banana. Time to clip. No, no. <laughs> None of that. Now kicked it behind by the Lions. This ball sits up nicely, and it is taken. And the Lions do score themselves the try. And it was actually the replacement. This point in time, I believe it was Henko Van Vick who was able to get that try. Yes, it was. And Amish just move on from the banana thing. And then as I try uh, Lions with Marmalade and Sticky Toffee, ask the Sharks. And even the Golden Lions logo looks like Marmalade colours. Does a bit, doesn't it? Also, well, Marmalade is normally made from a lesser quality or lesser quality oranges. The more acidic than the sweet. Uh, so if you like the acidity, uh, then go for it. Oh, okay. Let's so try Marmalade on toast first, Hamish. And there. And also, we have got the try, try, try for the Lions and your boy. And that said, Jordan, but now Jordan Hendricks are going to be lining up this one, find the man some fight from the Lions side. And that kick is going to be going over. Am I majorly behind? No, I am live on Sk Spark Sport, but they are just a little bit far behind, I guess. We will go like that, and we will go like this. There we go. Also, hard tackle on the jar of Marble at 10 minutes in the brief, and, and Banana Rama. And that one and about time they did something. And Hamish, uh, do you use external webcam or PC built-in webcam to for YouTube live streaming? So I have got an external webcam. I was about to pick up it and show you it, but then I just realized, you know, kind of, yeah, doesn't quite work out for that one. And Smokes, I love your commentator, exists your name, but yeah, it's pretty much just a Logitech webcam sitting on a tripod. I could probably have it higher, but I just sit it on the desk because I don't need to clip it onto anything other than just leave it there pretty much oh no spark sports sorry for the interruption the team are working on a fix we hope to be back up and running soon you're kidding me <laughs> there we go we're back already 
Marcus Alima Pimpy, first thing we're seeing coming back. I think Vincent Tachoka might have knocked that one on and also Katie Good one. And there as well. I'll say the winky face. I'm glad that the coverage came back as soon as it did. Built in webcam our oh, webcams web webcams are usually low quality video. And there as well. Yeah. I mean that's the thing. We used to what do we used to do? Did we used to do it on no, maybe not. Actually, I think we've always been through my PC. I was going to say we used to do it on my laptop, but I don't think that was actually the case. I think we did actually do it through the thingy, through just the PC all the way through, which is nice. I was going to do it on my phone at one point if I had to. Like, I remember when the palm, I remember when the power went out is what the plan of saying was, but it didn't quite happen. That's going to go up in the front rows and there's going to be another scrum reset here. Apparently to lose, nice backline movement. Nice hug. Oh, flicky little bit of skills there from the Toulouse side. And also the bread is down a slice. And there are some people don't like my mum and I jokes. Are there Jimmy Dodgers? And there's us, there's Katie Dixon. And also you got the marmalade jokes. And there as well, there are plenty of them about. That is for sure. liquid one more live stream to go ladies and gentlemen it is going to be in about 45 minutes time exit at jesus month so one of the games i've been looking forward to probably the most this weekend if it wasn't those two sides playing like if it was going to be just stab france and racing 92 we would probably not have stayed up till the late hour and also we've got that well i'm a jolly uh jolly jammer and then also we've got there are there many spring bots in this game there are a few for the sharks overall they have got who they got uh, Oxnashad, Bongi Ombanambi, and Thomas the Toys, Sia Khaleesi, uh, Makazoli Mapimpi, and then I think that's almost it. Whereas for the Lions, they are actually really lacking Springboks in their lineup. In fact, looking through, you'd argue there's probably none. But I can look at each Springboks, they have got a few. And also, we've got there, uh, oh God, Malakun, oh God. And there's, uh, what did he do? Did he just, he just turned it to lose, man, did he? What's happened? Oh, so, oh, Balakuna hat trick. Oh, did he score? Yeah, he did, no. Yeah, he did. Okay, that works. I mean, Sebastian said just chuck in the ball and he'll score. He done that. Talking about jamming up the chat on the side for fun during the game as the Sharks clinch it. And unfortunately, Exeter will win by 20. Wait, was there a try then? Oh, no, no. It's just a three-pointer. And it was a terrible game to watch, says Brave Star. And then, unfortunately, Exeter will win by 20 or more, says Richard. You never know. We'll have to wait and see how it does go. But that is going to be taking place in 40 minutes' time, ladies and gentlemen. So if you are new to that channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because we are going to be back for that later one. We're also back for the sevens. What I say at the beginning of the stream about Balakoon. Yeah, very nicely done by him. So 37-10 in the end. Tell you what, Sebastian, your prediction wasn't terrible there either. And alongside that, we did actually have, or in fact, Brody ended up going with 35-12. So it's the right amount of points. Just slightly wrong in terms of who was going to be able to get them. And that one is out. And also, we've got their conditions were horrible. Yeah, it was just absolutely bucketing down, unfortunately. And also, thank you, Samish, the Kiwi lads. Cheers, Kerry Jackson. Also, you called it Sebastian. Did indeed, but nonetheless. So, pretty much don't panic if you don't see that extra cheese versus months, the live stream scheduled yet. Reason behind it, I still have to make the thingy my bob to put it up. But after I've made the thingy my bob, I can guarantee you it is happening, the live stream. And that will be starting at 4.30. AM. In fact, it will be starting at 4.25 AM so that we've got time to go through the sides, etc. for that match. I mean, Sammy says, is it great streaming? No worries. And I thank you very much for tuning in, mate. It is much appreciated. Liquid. But nonetheless, thank you all very much for tuning in. We will see you all in a very short moment. i see you in half an hour, Legends. And there's Sir Sebastian. And your Leinster currently sit on top of the table, I should mention, on 60. Ulster on 50. Glasgow on 50. Munster 47. The Storm is on 47. The Sharks now move themselves up to 46. And the Bulls still sit in there on 43 in eighth. And thank you, Amish. Desi Machine. Thank you, says it was a patty. And also, our Leinster hammered Munster last week. And there's says Richard as well. And also, Paddington Beer. Favorite food was marmalade sandwiches. Paddington, my own heart. And there says Katie. Yeah, nonetheless, we will see you all in a very short moment for 